This is J Max Reacts. Today I'm watching a video by Honest that says rating debut singles of ex Disney stars. This should be interesting. Let's see what happens. Today we're going to be taking a trip down nostalgia lane and rating ex Disney Channel stars debut singles. Now we're only going to be focusing on the 2000s Disney Channel era, okay. where a majority of the acts were signed to Hollywood Records, which is a label under Disney. So there will be a lot of familiar names. Notably, a lot of acts signed to Disney didn't have a lot of creative freedom, and a lot of it is very basic, simple, trend-hopping teen pop. But what I'm basing the rankings on is the extent to how much they've aged. Is there actually some replay value? Was it something of its time that should stay of its time and never get another replay? Or is it good enough for a trip down memory lane? I think most people who grew up listening to Disney Channel acts know that it's not the best music. For a lot of people, it is simply nostalgia driven, perhaps the same appeal of just a catchy, good bubblegum pop song. But I do think there are some actual gems and nice pop songs released by Disney acts that probably would have been even bigger hits if performed by an artist who didn't solely cater to such a small, youthful audience. But that does not apply to the first and worst song in my ranking. Uh -oh. Call It Whatever by Bella Thorne. I never by heard this bar, one. It's like the worst song released by a Disney artist of its time. Add beauty to any celebration with Venus and Fleur's Eternity Flowers. He's adding more the aggressive lately too. Time period. There's absolutely no redeemable qualities about this song. The production is awful. It just sounds like noise. Bella's voice is paper thin, processed to hell and back. Oh wow. It sounds like Kesha with a dollar sign was on the mood board for this song. The song screams low effort all across the board. Damn. There are some hooks in the song, but overall it's pretty disastrous. In a present day world, I could see this being turned into a hyper pop song, but in its original standing, it's just a pretty crappy pop song. I'm glad Bella Thorne realized that music was not her calling. Yeah, no, I've never Next heard on the that list, one. we have R5 Loud. I remember this one. For those of you who don't know, R5 was the group that was made up of Ross Lynch and his siblings. There's nothing terribly offensive or bad about this song. It just kind of sounds like every generic boy band song released in the early 2010s. Okay. An adult equivalent would be the type of music Maroon 5 was making. Uh. Ross Lynch and his brother Rocky are now making more mature music under their group name, The Driver Era. Next in line is Mandy by the Jonas Brothers. Mm -hmm. Mandy is written about a family friend of the Jonas's. It's really trying to lean heavy into the teen pop punk sound it's just very boring and run-of-the-mill. It's not catchy, which is the main appeal of teen pop songs. Yeah. So I feel like it loses the majority of its value in that itself. Holla at the DJ, Coco Jones. Oh my gosh. I love Coco Jones. <laughs> Me and her are actually friends, but there's no bias to be had here. Okay. I don't like anything about this song. I feel like it's Diet Rihanna and Beyonce. Mm -hmm. It's like a Disney version of Beyonce's Diva. Mm -hmm. It's also something I could imagine Willow Smith singing during her With My Hair era. I said the same thing every time I heard this song. I was like, it sounds like Willow Smith. <laughs> but what's funny to me is I don't like how that the DJ, but she has a song called Peppermint that's very similar to it, but I love, I love Peppermint. I just hate this song. <laughs> And I really feel like that's the same angle the label was going for with Holla at the DJ. Probably. I think the best part of this song is Coco's personality beaming through, but it has no replay value, not even for a nostalgia trip. Right. Selena Gomez in the scene, Falling Down. I think I remember this The first thing. single from the then faux pop rock group is not a terrible offering, but it sounds like a shameless rewrite of Pink's You Plus Your Hand. I can see that, yeah. I can't listen to this song without thinking of more capable voices, like Pink or Kelly Clarkson, or even more stronger vocalists on the Disney roster at that time period that really would have sold this more. Nonetheless, I do like Selena's sass in the song. I think it's interesting that Disney tried to sell Selena in the scene as a pop rock act, when it's clear her home has always been dance pop. So yesterday, Hilary Duff. Oh gosh. The official debut of one of the main stars that ushered in the teen actor who gets a recording deal for Disney format is quite catchy. Mm -hmm. It definitely is drenched in the influence of Avril Lavigne. Mm -hmm. Although I do think Hillary sounds very presentable on the song, sometimes the song to me sounds like she's just doing karaoke. Some of the lyrics make me side-eye the writers. Make no mistake, no one is expecting masterful lyrics from a Disney act, 
but I still can't get past how such an obvious lyrical blunder ended up in the song. If the light is off, then it isn't on. Like, no shit. This is not some revelatory or clever lyric. And the fact that it's the climax of the song makes it stick out like a sore thumb. Ooh. Otherwise, it's a pretty cutesy on trend kiss off anthem. Another one Can't I never heard. For trying. Oh my God, this one. This one, they were playing this song all the time on Disney and I did not like the song. I love Sabrina Carpenter's music outside of like this song, especially when she began to do more mature content. But like this song was so annoying to me. Can't like a Megan Trainor song. It's a bit of a different approach for Disney stars. It's not pop rock or dance pop. It's just a cutesy acoustic ballad about crushing at a young age. It was actually written by Megan Trainor. Now how I, how I say it's like a Megan Trainor song? And she wrote the fucking song. That's crazy. Um, and again, Megan is another one. I love some of her music, but then there are moments when her music is just like, it grates on that one nerve. In the back of your head, it's like, come on, girl, do something different. <laughs> it's a lot of sense in retrospect, because I could imagine someone like her singing it. Very, The song yeah. has nice melodies, and being that it's so stripped back, it is aged pretty decently, but it's not all that memorable. Come Back to Me. Vanessa Hudgens. Oh, shut up, wait a minute. It's a friendly R&B song. And I could have seen this having some real radio credibility for its time period if it wasn't so overproduced. So y'all ever listen to a song that you used to love, 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 and then you're like, wait a minute, we love this as kids and now as adults, this is trash. This was horrible. Um, I'd never really like come back to me with her second song, say, okay, I don't know what it was. I used to love that song. I listened to that shit about two months ago when I was doing a little ex Disney binge of my own and I was like, oh my gosh, she cannot sing. And this is terrible, like, what is this? It's one of Disney's most straightforward R&B offerings. I could see the song easily fitting on an early Rihanna record, for example. It's not terribly written or performed, it's pretty simple. Replay, Zendaya. Mm -hmm. Replay was like one of the last hurrahs for the Disney pop star making machine. Co-written by Zendaya, it's an electro R&B song with EDM influences. It reminds me a lot of the work of Cassie. It's convincingly written to sound like a big radio song. The song was allegedly intended for Rihanna in her loud era. And I could certainly hear it among songs like Only Grown the World sonically. Mm. However, loudish is a bit too flirty for a song like Replay, which makes sense why it ended up in the hands of a young artist like Zendaya. It's just a little nice pop song. But I do feel like it's one of those songs that could have gone to virtually any popular artist during that time. Fair point. See, I really, really, really hate that Zendaya's music didn't get the look that it was supposed to get. She had some pretty good songs on her first album, and then when she was gearing up for either a second album or just a second run, the song with Chris Brown that um, sampled TLC, so that was a dope one. Um, I would have loved to have seen her music career evolve a little bit more. Okay. Miley Cyrus, the debut too. single of one of Disney's most towering and recognizable figures. Yeah. Even though she had released music for Hannah Montana, this is the first song Miley Cyrus released under her own name. In this song, she has a line that says, I have a heart that will never be tamed, <laughs> which is a rather prophetic lyric for Miley's entire career. Mm -hmm. The song is a bit bolder than the general Disney star song and has some dark electro production, mm -hmm. which actually calls to mind Plastic Hearts era Miley. Yeah. This is notably one of the songs from the Disney Channel era to actually cross over into general listeners and not just the youth. It went top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. Yeah. It's still very teen friendly, but delivered in a way that's more general. Get Back, Demi Lovato. I don't remember this Get one. Back is kind of a toxic song. Having lyrics like, I want to talk back and get yelled at. Okay. Definitely makes me side eye the song a little. <laughs> but ultimately, it's just a song about wanting to get back into an old relationship, one that is presumably on and off. It's an 80s influenced style of pop punk rock and is written by Demi Lovato and the Jonas Brothers. What sells the song is really Demi Lovato's kick ass vocal performance. She sounds like a natural, and even though it's dipped in gloss, it's not overbearingly produced or overly processed like other Disney pop rock songs. It's a little more gutsy. I could see it being even more legitimized if someone like Pink or Kelly Clarkson performed it. It's good. Yeah, I'm Very 2000s teen movie centric, but Demi undeniably rocked this song from the beginning to end. Ready or not, Bridget Midler. Ooh, Bridget. The debut single from Bridget Midler. She came out swinging. It's a nice song. It's very well adjusted youthful pop. 
It has the essence of Carly Rae Jepsen's Call Me Maybe. It's a bit cliche, but fun, nicely produced, and performed. There's nothing I would change about this song, nor is there anything to complain about. It's just a nice, fun, bubblegum pop song. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to ranking this song as the best debut single by a Disney Channel act from this time period. I can see that. And that about concludes yeah. my thoughts. What did you think of this ranking? What are your own rankings? What are your personal favorites? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye. That's a good one. Um, I definitely agree with this ranking, primarily because some of them I, I didn't hear. Um, Demi, I love Demi now. A lot of them I love now that they're making more mature content. When they were doing Disney stuff, it just came off real cheesy to me. And primarily because by that time I was I was really a young adult slash adult. So <laughs> I couldn't always get with it, but I was still watching the shows that they were a part of. Um, but the last one I definitely agree with Bridget Mendler is what well, I mean, she I know she's doing her PhD now, um, but like when she was doing music, it was so so good like her first album under hollywood was so dope like i remember hearing um ready or not and i was like okay i kind of like that i didn't love hurricane but then like when her stuff dropped on itunes i listened to the previews and it was like two songs that made me buy the album 515 and um love will tell us where to go and then i actually downloaded the album and i started listening to it and i fell in love with um quicksand that is like one of my favorite songs by her um so so crazy talented and like i said about zendaya i think had her music career panned out a little bit more, it would have been great too. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, she was getting ready to do more mature music, but she was still doing Disney shows. And it didn't quite, it just wouldn't have looked right. Um, whereas people like Miley and Demi and Selena, Hillary, the rest of them, they really did wait until they transitioned out of Disney roles into more mature things to do mature music, which is, you know, timely. But I would, I think Zendaya could still come out with something now, it would be okay. Um, <laughs> so it's dope to see uh, Coco Jones is definitely killing it now. We love Caliber. Um, and I loved a lot of the stuff that she dropped outside of um, Disney that just didn't get noticed either. She did a really good job. Uh, with that, Jonas Brothers have evolved um, tremendously. And yeah, so this was a good little trip down memory lane, some nostalgia, as he said. <laughs> but I do agree with the ranking. I do think it's, it's, it's very accurate and spot on. Let me know your thoughts on this below. Comment, like, subscribe until next time. Peace.